His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Khair Palace the Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah, Speaker of the Shura Council Ali Al Saleh, and their deputies, in addition to members of the committee in charge of responding to His Majesty the King's speech in the opening of the second session of the fourth legislative term. His Majesty the King voiced pride in the legislative branch's efforts to assume its constitutional duties in the best way, aiming at achieving the best interest of the kingdom and its citizens and enhancing the democratic values which were laid down by the National Action Charter. It Attendees expressed their congratulations to His Majesty the King on the occasion of the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the National Action Charter and prayed to Allah the Almighty to grant His Majesty the King with abundant health and further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom. His Majesty expressed appreciation to all Bahraini citizens for their participation in the celebrations of the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the National Action Charter. His Majesty expressed his thanks and appreciation to the Representative and Shura Councils for their major role played in enhancing national unity through cooperation, as well as for their efforts regarding meeting the citizens' needs and requirements. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's constant march towards development and enhanced the value of citizenship, which are based on justice, equality and equal opportunities. He also stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation and coordination between all authorities in order to achieve the best for Bahrain and its citizens. His Majesty the King praised the representative and Shura's responses and affirmed that the Kingdom will always remain united. The meeting reviewed a number of regional issues and means of achieving the set goals of the National March. His Majesty called for concerted national efforts to develop the nation amid the rapidly unfolding regional and global developments.
Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, hailed His Majesty the King's speech as it directed to adopt visions that aim to achieve the best for the kingdom and its citizens. He also affirmed the Council's keenness to maintain the kingdom's national gains and increase efforts regarding the kingdom's development in various fields. He affirmed the importance of enhancing cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities in order to overcome all political and economic challenges that face the region. The Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Salah, hailed His Majesty the King's constant support to the legislative authority and expressed pride in the numerous achievements made in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. He also hailed His Majesty's directives to enhance national unity as to achieve the best for all Bahraini citizens. Under the patronage of the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Military Suburb Championship and the annual shooting competition was held today in the attendance of the Royal Guard Commander Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The BDF Commander held BDF's remarkable efforts exerted in organizing the championship and expressed his congratulations to all participants and to the Royal Guard Special Forces who won the championship. He also affirmed the BDF's constant keenness to support the military sports field. Secretary General of the Military Sports Association Association, Brigadier General Dawood Hussein Al Mana delivered a speech in which he highlighted Bahrain's leadership care in support to the BDF. Then the BDF commander honored the winners of the championship and expressed his appreciation to the participants, wishing them every success.
The Bahrain Defense Force Combat Forces left the kingdom early today, heading to the King Khalid military city in Hafr al Batin, northern kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to take part in the Ra'd al Shamal Thunder of the North maneuver. Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed al Khalifa said Thunder of the North is the largest military drill in the region in terms of number of participating countries. He said 20 Arab, Islamic, and friendly countries are taking part in the major military exercise to protect the Gulf Arab and Islamic people from terrorism and prepare to deal with terrorist organizations. He added that the three-week massive maneuver aims at promoting military cooperation among the participating countries, developing competencies, raising combat readiness, and training the participating forces on using modern military mechanisms. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed noted the participation of BDF's combat forces in the drill comes in line with the directives of His Majesty the King to reinforce joint military cooperation and coordination with the Gulf Cooperation Council countries and to contribute in achieving aspired integration. This is in addition to strengthening joint military cooperation among Gulf, Arab and Islamic countries so as to enhance combat readiness and train participating forces on modern mechanisms and methods of combat as well as to gain more experience. BDF Commander-in-Chief confirmed the armed forces are the protective shield for the achievements and gains that have been made, stressing that combat approach is a legitimate defense approach that aimed to achieve security and stability. He added that the Thunder of the North maneuver follows the military and defense planning framework that seeks to upgrade military skills through implementing various military operations. He pointed out BDF follows a policy based on joint cooperation and coordination with GCC member states armed forces and commits to collaborative work in dealing with security threats and sabotage plans. He noted Bahrain's participation in the Saudi-led Arab coalition to support legitimacy of Yemen, stressing that Gulf, Arab and Islamic military and defense cooperation became a strategic option for armed forces in order to face challenges and achieve the best interests of these countries. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met with a delegation from the American National Defense University led by retired General Joseph Hoar. Present were Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Yusuf Al Jalahma, BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab Naimi, and Public Inspector Major General Abdullah Naimi. BDF Commander-in-Chief commended the deep-rooted historic relations binding the two countries, expressing keenness to further consolidate joint cooperation in the military field so as to strengthen the relations of friendship. The meeting also discussed bilateral relations and ways of expanding joint cooperation and coordination as well as issues of common concern. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired the Council's weekly session today in which he expressed his congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the National Action Charter. He also expressed appreciation to Bahraini citizens and government institutions for their contribution in achieving the best interests for the Kingdom and its citizens. During the session, the Council approved the report of the Legislation and Legal Affairs Committee regarding amending some law provisions of the Decree by Law 26 of 1986, as well as amending law provisions of the Judiciary Authority Law. Following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of implementing the Digital Empowerment Project, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, inaugurated the project today as it will be implemented in five schools. The Minister toured Al Hid High School and visited the training center and the science lab. The Minister said that the Ministry made agreements with major international IT companies in order to introduce teachers and students to the new ways of implementing the technology in the educational field. Human rights is a very big part of the National Action Charter and plays a role in how it is perceived. The institutions in charge of upholding human rights in Bahrain vary. The Ombudsman Office targets an angle of it here in the Kingdom. More in this report by Sarah al -Brik. The National Charter draft represents a document of loyalty and allegiance to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa 
In the different chapters of this draft, it states the necessary and appropriate measures that serve the interests of the country. The government goals are to protect the country, to maintain national unity, and to achieve comprehensive, sustainable, and protected development in all fields. Justice is the basis of the government, human rights, equality, rule of law, liberty, peace, and equal opportunity are all core principles of the society that are ensured by the state. The National Action Charter is an integrated document for reform in all areas in Bahrain. Uh, the Charter is considered to be a translation of His Majesty the King's Reform Project that identifies the foundations and fundamentals of civilization of the Kingdom of Bahrain, especially in the field of human rights. Kingdom of Bahrain and due to the reform initiatives taken by His Majesty King Hamad bin uh, Isa Al Khalifa was enabled to achieve comprehensive achievements as it became a party to a number of treaties and conventions and other important agreements in the field of human rights. In addition to the establishment of a number of human rights organizations that enhance the development of human rights in the kingdom in accordance with uh, the international principles of Paris. In addition to the cooperation with many different human rights and in international institutions, and particularly the Human Rights Council of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, this led to a peaceful national unity among all sects in Bahrain. The upholding of the National Charter can be seen through different entities such as the Ombudsman Office, which was established in 2012 as an independent secretariat in the Ministry of Interior to ensure compliance with professional standards of policing set forth in the Code of Conduct for the Police, as well as in the administrative regulations governing the performance of civil servants. It operates within a general framework that includes respect for human rights and the consolidation of justice, the rule of law and the public confidence. Uh, as you might know that the Independent Minister of Interior Ombudsman is a direct implementation of Biki recommendation and uh, actually a milestone uh, of which we as Bahrainis should be very proud. Uh, in fact, we are in the Ombudsman office very keen to develop and promote the human rights issues in the kingdom by ensuring the principle, principle of accountability, taking into our consideration the important role of the office that we have to play in building the trust and respect between the community and the police or other Ministry of Interior employees. On the other side, we are very keen to build just the same relation of a trust between us and the international human rights organizations by opening a direct channels of cooperation in order to learn from them and exchanging experience. As we had received many complaints and investigation requests from many international organizations through the last two years, Years. And we had responded to them, uh, which was reflected obviously on our credibility abroad. The National Action Charter has accomplished a lot, especially in the human rights field. The Ombudsman Office is only one mechanism of safeguarding human rights here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This is Sarah Break for Bahrain 55. Good evening and welcome to the Business News here on Bahrain Television. Under the patronage of Bahrain's Minister for Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Al Zayani, the Junior World Entrepreneurship Forum opened today in Manama. It marks the first time that the two-day international forum is being held in a Middle Eastern country. The forum was organized by the Origin Group in cooperation and coordination with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, British Council and the University of Applied Sciences. The minister confirmed the ministry's continued support to small and medium enterprises known as SMEs and startup entrepreneurship. He affirmed the importance of supporting entrepreneurship and SMEs to contribute to the development of the national economy. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,169.14 points, 2.3 points up from yesterday's closing level. While the investment and services sectors rose, investors traded mainly in commercial bank shares, which represented 75% of total share value traded. In total today, there were 71 transactions, constituting 2,594,251 shares worth 230,447 Bahraini dinars. 
Returning to New York Fashion Week for their eighth season, Bahraini designer brand Noon by Noor debuted its fall 2016 collection at the dock skylight at Moynihan Station. Sheikh Noor said the collection captures a relaxed, timeless aesthetic through masculine tailoring, long, fluid silhouettes, and rich textiles. Sheikh Haya said new looks shape add a feminine sensibility while managed hardware is interpreted into the embellishments. She added that there's also a playful element to the collection with the use of silver spotted denim and modern evening wear which makes it a timeless collection with luxurious fabrics muted tones and classic staple pieces